Hello and welcome to the Average Nobody's Podcast, number 71 for March 18th, 2019. My name is Matt. My name is Ryan. Ryan. It's good it's good to hear your voice. It is. You know, it's always uh it's always nice to hear your voice. It's it's always a pleasure to to be back in the podcast game. Mm-hmm. Uh and you know, we, we, we find a way to do it. You know, maybe we go a, a week or two in between, but yeah. we always find our way back home. Well, we always we always do it for the right reasons. We we I I feel like that when we do it it's because we want to do it. It's not because we feel like we need to do it. And uh I, I think eventually we'll find our rhythm and uh and get going. But we're at seventy one right now, which is really good. And I, I like typing that today. I'm like, you know, we'll be at 100 in no time, which is easily the most. Well, I mean, I think how many episodes of Drinking with Class do you think we did? Do you remember what the final count was? Was it like into the 40s, right? 40 or almost 50? It's yeah, because I mean, I think we almost did it like once a week for a year straight. Yeah, that was supremely impressive for sure. And then like, and then we did all the ones after, you know, like every once in a while. So I would say we were probably in the 60s, yeah. which is is kind of impressive because like we wrote it, filmed it, you know, you edited and everything, put it together. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, it was, it, it was work. And I mean, each each show was unique in yeah. its own way, which is my favorite part about it. Yeah, I I love that rhythm that we got into with doing that. So hopefully we can we can find one with the podcast. Um, so you can find us on the blog averagenobodies.com, on Twitter at average nobodies, and our YouTube is youtube.com slash the average nobodies. Our YouTube is where all of our stuff lives. Like even just an audio episode like this, it'll be uploaded as a video to our YouTube along with just how we were talking about before, all of our drinking with class videos, everything we've ever done for the average nobodies, plus some extra stuff that we did along the way, Twitter News Weekly, all that is on our YouTube channel. We have a ton, I didn't realize, we have a ton of videos on our YouTube. <clears throat> I think we're creeping up on 300 or something like that. Like That's something something absurd, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of videos. <laughs> like if you go back and like look at like think about what we what we used to do and and like we were pretty prolific like video makers. Like like you said, like religiously once a week. But then there were times where we were doing, I mean, we were doing Twitter News Weekly, but we were all we were doing that once a week. But we were also doing other videos like in between, like I, also during the week. So like multiple videos a week is. Pretty impressive, anyway. Yeah, because then we would do like the stupid sayings and, <laughs> yeah, and things right, like right. that. Yeah, and the movie, yeah. the, the movie reviews we did with. Uh, <laughs> I think we did. We did two. I don't even know if we did two. I know we did Semi Pro, which like yep. added, it was like a six year old movie. <laughs> 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 which I guess is what the what the charm of it was, but that was really funny. Oh god, uh, that was funny. Hey, Ryan, what's what's new? What have you been up to? Well, I mean, most recently just got back from a wedding in uh, Long Island. So a college friend of uh, of mine got married on Saturday. It was uh, awesome. Really, really fun wedding. Uh, I was at uh, the Garden Garden City Hotel, which is this incredibly huge, beautiful hotel um, in in New York, and it was it was just so much fun. And it was a Jewish wedding. Never been to one before. Mm. Um, so I got to experience that. That was really fun. Um, the band was unreal, just like nonstop. I really thought they were going to like, I, I want to say blow their load, but that's not the correct saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know know. What I mean, right? Go with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I really thought they were going to blow their load too early and just, I mean, they were playing like Whitney Houston during this, during pe- when people were eating salad and oh, I'm man. like, there's only so many, you know, really good dancing wedding songs, but they kept it coming. The energy was just high all night. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Got to see some some friends from college I haven't seen in in a bit, so that was really cool. Uh, drank you know far too much as I guess you do at an open bar wedding. <laughs> and dri- driving home yesterday, uh, got about a half hour into the drive, had to pull over, throw up on the side of the highway. Yeah, <laughs> one of those. Yeah, that just means you did it right. Exactly. Um, but yeah, other than that, just. Uh, not too much. I mean, working, we're we're coming up extremely fast on WrestleMania, which uh, oh, I cannot oh, wait. Can't I got wait. Monday Night Raw playing in the background right now. I'm mute. Just, yeah, you know, I'm in, I'm in the wrestling spirit. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my most recent uh, adventure. How about yourself? Um, so just to, I want to double back for a second. Uh, the wedding, did they do? So I just went to my first Jewish wedding as well. Uh, Chris Cardarelli's wedding. His uh, wife is Jewish. And they did. Did they do the, the 
Ave Nagila or whatever the, that song is. I, I'm, I'm terrible for not knowing what it is. But, yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm they did. It. did they with the chair and everything? Oh, amazing. They did, yep. Oh, it's, and then they it's did a blast. It. It was so much. Actually, the bride fell off. Luckily, oh, she no. didn't get they didn't get too high, <laughs> but they like couldn't get her on the chair at first, and then she slipped and fell. And then oh, one of my friend's husbands, they're Jewish, and they they got married like last year. And yeah. he just like turns to Holly and he's like, "Gotta get the chair with the handles." And Holly's like, "What?" Got, yeah, yeah. It's pro and he's move. like, "Yeah, you always pro bring move. your own chairs." So I was like, "That's something you don't think of, <laughs> you know?" But it definitely would have came in handy. Oh, that's good that's good but they did, they did oh my god it was so much fun everybody's just uh, in such a good mood like it's just constant positivity you know what i mean just yeah. like everyone's there for one reason just to have a good time so yeah it was, it was awesome that's very nice well for me i've i really haven't been up i don't know i haven't been up to much um just work and i mean we i think i don't think we podcast since i got back from my big trip in new york i was in new york for two weeks doing the international toy fair um, with my, with my company. Uh, so we were there for two weeks. And then when I got back, I felt like I had fell into like, uh, like, I don't know, like a, like a black hole. Like, I felt like I had been there for like months. It was like, it was just like long days. Uh, it, it was a successful show, which is good for us, but it was just long days. And like, I was beat, like, it took me a week to recover from, from being there. That's a so, long time to be somewhere, especially when that place is New York. Right. And New York is just like, and it's like, so everything's so tempting. Like we would work very early in the morning until a decent, a decent time at night. And then we would go out to like a bar to like, not for like, you know, not to start off for fun, but like we would go for, you know, for food so we could eat something. And then, you know, it's New York and everything is open until whenever, like there's no like, you know, so it's like, it just really like is a, is a, is a tough city. Like you can get really get, uh, tempted by a lot of different <laughs> things and obviously you can have any food you want delivered to you at any time of day um which is really nice that's a good thing about new york. Uh, but when i was first there the first first day i was there it was the westminster dog show and my hotel happened to be the uh hotel that they used for the dogs so oh wow any like, any uh handsome pups a ton of handsome pups like filled like i mean i got on, i got on the elevator with some dogs that were almost as tall as me like big, like Great Danes, Mastiffs, and like all day, like like when I was in the hotel room, like dogs were running up and down the hallway. It's pretty funny. Oh, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, I actually, you know, you never really think of that. Like, obviously, they have to stay somewhere, but you yeah, wouldn't think so of it the... to be a, just like it, it's you know, like at the hotel, you had just dogs everywhere. Yeah, it was just like this was the designated like uh, dog friendly hotel. And it was it was right across the street from Madison Square Garden where the Westminster Dog Show is, and yeah. so it was just I mean it was I mean it was like it, I'm not exaggerating like when I whenever no matter what time of day those first couple of days I was there no matter what time of day like the lobby was just like filled with dogs because it was either like you know like it was dogs just like hanging out like not staying because you don't want to put the dog in the hotel room the hotel rooms aren't that big you know either yeah. they were hanging out in the lobby you know it was cold out too or they were like taking them out for walks so it's like constantly like dogs in and out in the lobby it was, it was chaos and they were all like it's funny because they're all just like very well groomed dogs you could tell they're all show dogs <laughs> like they're like none of them not a hair out of place on any of them uh so that was that was pretty cool and then, like i said the show went well um got to eat a few cool spots in new york i went to this place called the milk bar have you heard of it <laughs> i have not what an interesting it's, name it's exactly what you think it is it's just like this like uh it started oh. off as like a little niche place but now it's like they like give you like you can get cereal there. You can get like these cake pops, like they're like you know stuff that's like good for dipping in milk and and stuff like that. And mm. they sell what what I got and what was amazing is they sell milk, but it's flavored like it's the milk from a cereal, like if the oh. milk was sitting in a cereal. Yeah. So I had a fruity pebbles. Oh, um, that sounds amazing. Um, and yeah, and they had like and they had a cocoa pebbles one. They had a Reese's. Reese's Puffs one, so it was like it tasted like the milk, like the milk that was in a bowl of cereal, for that what cereal. An idea. Oh, so good, yeah. And it was bottled, like it wasn't like something they like handmade. Like this was made in like you know in like a professional like oh, it was, oh it was so it good. Cold? Yeah, yeah, it was cold. Oh, yeah, it was cold. Good. <laughs> there's no, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than warm milk. There's no, worse than warm it's just milk. something you know, awful about cold. it. Yeah, all right, yeah, good. It was a, it was like in a cooler, like you would go to like Dunkin' Donuts and get a bottle of coffee milk, coffee milk or chocolate milk. But it was like in the oh, so, oh man! Why it was is so that cool. not everywhere? Why is that not in Rhode Island? I know. 
I know, I know. That should be something that's bottled and sold everywhere. Like you see strawberry, you see strawberry milk, you see regular milk, you see chocolate milk, you see coffee milk, and then you see cereal milk. And like that is just a, a standard for a type of milk. Amazing. Now, two questions. Which yeah. which was the best kind you had, and is there a kind that you they didn't have that you wish they had? So I only had the fruity pebble one, and I okay. was Good I, I really I, I was because I went there one night. It is kind of out of the way. I went there one night. I got the fruity pebbles. Uh, but I wanted to come back and try the Reese's Puff because that 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 cereal is my jam. Mm. But I, what I didn't see and that I wish they had was Cinnamon Toast Crunch because yeah. that is like an amazing cereal milk flavor. Like when you have Cinnamon Toast tr- Crunch and then you drink the milk after or you just like while you're eating it, it's just like an amazing flavor. And I didn't see that they had that. Hmm. So they that would be charms? something. Um, that's a good question. I don't know if they did. I used to they like, had, like, like the like the marshmallow parts like melt in the milk. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and the other thing too was like, they couldn't use like the actual names of the, of the cereal. So it was like fruity pebbles were like fruity snacks or whatever the hell they were called. So like, it could have been something else. Like I think there was one called frosted, uh, frosted cereal. So that could have been like a frosted flakes or like even like maybe a, a, a lucky charms. Cause you know, the, the base cereal is, is frosted. Yeah, fruity rocks. <laughs> fruity rocks. Maybe that's what it was called. I think that was just actually it was just rocks. Uh, me, don't please don't drink this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Other than that, I've just been been hanging here. Oh, I uh, I I've been doing so. This guy, I, I I follow this podcast called Kind of Funny Games. It's it's just all about video games. They do video game news and whatever. I've been listening to it for a long time. But this guy went up on there. Um. And he announced like he does a podcast and like you want everybody to check it out. And so I checked it out and then I was listening to that. And on that podcast, there was this this guy, his head name happens to be Ryan as well. And he was looking for someone to start a gaming podcast with. And so I, I, uh, I threw my hat in the ring. And so I've been doing that. This is tomorrow will be our third show, but it's like a very like casual, like we, sh- we play a game together on Xbox and we podcast while we're playing. So it's like, a, this is all his idea. Like he just needed someone to do it with. And so I'm giving it, throwing my hat in the ring, giving it a try. So it's called When Gaming. So you can check us out. We're on everywhere else where podcasts are and stuff like that. Just like ours. Oh, wonderful. Did you, it, yeah. Is Joe better than me? Is that what you're telling me? He's, yeah, he, so this, 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 this is what the podcast is. <laughs> this, this is what this uh, podcast is is, uh, is is meant to be. I'm sorry, Ryan. I feel like you could have just texted me, Matt. You didn't, you didn't have to <laughs> do a podcast. I, I wanted, to, I wanted to make it up. I wanted, to, you know, I wanted to make it a podcast. Uh, but no, he's he, he's a good guy. Like I, I, it's weird because like we, I, I text, I tweeted at him. Like I, I throw my hat in the ring. I figured he would already had like a bunch of other people wanting to do it. And he was still looking for somebody and we didn't talk really at all. We were just like, yeah, Tuesday we'll do it. And like, we got on and we started playing this game and like that kind of was like, we just, it, it was pretty natural right from the beginning, just like talking about games. And it was like, I don't know. He, I, I think it went pretty well. He was happy with it. So we're going to keep doing it until, you know, we're just going to keep going. Awesome. Well, best of luck. I hope it, I uh, hope it does well. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's it. So, uh, Let's get into some new new stories. <laughs> well, I gotta bring I gotta I gotta bring up this first one. Okay, I don't have the the picture. So the first one is a tweet by Billy Baldwin. And do you know? Did you see any like any background on it at all? Or no. or, or it's okay. So Billy Baldwin just tweeted out. Just this was yesterday. Just spent the last hour with my arms wrapped around my giant six foot four, seventeen year old son. No phones, no words, just silence, breathing. Bonding, best hour I've had in ages. Hashtag grateful. I don't know. I don't know what to say about this tweet. And then, like, listen, I understand. Like, I'm not going to be shamed here into like saying that uh, people shouldn't love their kids. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying when things like this pop up, or when Tom Brady is kissing his kids on the lips, like I <laughs> like it's just there's just something that doesn't like totally ring true here. Like something. This is odd. For him to like, it's, think think it. Don't tweet it out. Like you have a lot of followers. Like, don't tweet this out. I, I, what what is what is your take on this bizarre tweet? I imagine you think it's bizarre as well. Yes. No. I mean, it's one hundred percent bizarre. Um, one, I think, anytime you refer to someone as a giant, it always throws me <laughs> off a little bit. I don't know why. What, <laughs> what is it, what does his height have to do with it? 
Like, what does this fight have to do with it at all? I don't understand. Was he like, bragging? Yeah, like he, like he's he's strong or tall enough to hug someone that tall. I don't. <laughs> well, because it's funny because I, I honestly didn't even know Billy Baldwin was on Twitter, and then I fell asleep early last night and woke up to your screenshot. And it, I just, <laughs> you know, we, we text a lot and I'm not going to say we have normal conversations, but a screenshot no. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning could be anything. I will say if you gave me a hundred thousand guesses, I wouldn't have guessed it was a Billy Baldwin tweet, but I, I don't know. It's a little strange. I'm actually going through his feed right now. I just want to make sure it's still there. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going through it right now. I want to see if he like tweeted. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's still there. Oh my god! I spent the last what hour this? with my my giant six foot four. <laughs> Every other one of his tweets is just him quote tweeting Donald Trump. Right? Yeah, just hating Trump. Um, I don't know. I mean, I it's, didn't. I, I get I didn't it. Like see I, anything I, I, about I, his son? Like I don't know if his son is like uh, depressed or, or anything like that. But I don't. I, I, don't. Can't, I can't imagine that is going to help things. I get it. Like I, I understand. Like he can get wrapped up in like, and I and I'll, and honestly, this this too. I'll put this out there as a disclaimer. Like I'm not a father, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really get the like the you know you can never really get the love of a child, uh, from from a parent's perspective until you've done it. That's what I've heard, and I I, I believe that to be true. But even then, like I, it would be tough to tweet something like this. How, how do you think his 17 year old son feels? <laughs> Like God, Jesus Christ! One of the one of the responses, like the fourth one down, is just some guy. It's a Jesus, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Billy. Like I picture this guy scrolling his Twitter like I was, <laughs> and seeing that, and just be like, "Fuck, Billy, what are you doing?" And the one below that is just my large son. <laughs> And like a lot of, and this is the other thing too. Like a lot of people are very supportive. <laughs> oh, no. uh, a a parents love no no bounds. Sharing is powerful. This is so heartwarming. I wish there were more men like and dads like you. Like uh, maybe. Uh, and then do you see no. the guy? <laughs> Which one? Just spent seventy two hours massaging my son's beefy ass and weeping. No phones. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is that? Oh, it's it's now it's like the fifth one down. I see, I see it. Oh. <laughs> it is, but see, I think people kind of have the same sense of humor as us with like the large thing because someone put my son Landon, aka the behemoth, is almost eight feet tall, <laughs> and yet he has gen- he is as gentle as a leaf. He is as muscular as a horse, and yet allows me to cradle him as if he were a small fish. <laughs> he never cries and barely laughs. We cuddled, not in a gay way, without our phones. Perfect. <laughs> I just, it just, I guess the moral of this story is that Twitter will never cease to amaze me, and I really hope it never, I hope it never does. Like, I just, I hope I'm always, like, surprised by what comes next on Twitter, even though, like, the worst things imaginable can be found on, on Twitter. And, like, the weirdest things. I just, I hope it never does. I hope I'm always flabbergasted by what I see on Twitter. I agree. I mean, there's some some <laughs> truly terrible things on Twitter, but then you get stuff like this, and it's, uh, it's so Ryan, good. What about, what about, think about this. If we had, if we were still doing Twitter News Weekly, this would have been the whole episode. Yeah, yeah. We just, we would have, this would have been top billing. Top billing. We could have just sc- scrolled through these replies, and that's it. We would have had enough enough sources for a week worth of episode <laughs> so good billy i mean you love your billy ball when you love your kid yeah i mean i can't i can't fault you for that i can't fault you for that i i just can't it's just but at the same time you know you can't you can't just let it be you know you gotta no. you, you gotta you gotta laugh at that it's gotta be, you gotta laugh at it you, uh, laugh at you know it. what his son's name is billy what's his son what's his son's name vance Vance, it's in Bob uh, Vance Vance Refrigeration. Yeah, Vance Baldwin, or maybe yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's Baldwin. But how um, how many Baldwin now kids are like how many oh Baldwin God. nephews are there? So like if there's the the four was it three or four Baldwin brothers? I think it's Stephen, Billy, Alec, and Danny, and Danny Daniel. Yeah, so four. And they all have kids, I think. Yeah, Alec Baldwin has like five kids. Jesus. And then so one of them is married to not one of Alec Baldwin's, one of Billy's or Daniel Baldwin's is married to Justin Bieber. Oh, that's right. Haley, Haley Baldwin. She's beautiful. That is right. As she is. She is. She is. Didn't get a prenup with that though. Interesting. I mean, they both must I mean, I know Justin Bieber is like beyond loaded. Yeah. But like she must have money. She must have money as well, right? Oh, I, I mean, think she well, she's one of those like 
so she's, she's like, like a, an, an a influencer, model. like she, an Instagram model, but like I don't think she's on the level of him. But I'm sure she's still a millionaire. So at that yeah. point, like really, like how much? I, I, at a certain point, I can't imagine you. You're like, I need to make more money. It's like, what do I do? She just keeps coming in. People <laughs> keep paying me to do things. Like, hey, show up to this party. Um, we'll give you five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I'll okay. keep coming. <laughs> yeah. All the people that all the people that hate on influencers like that are just jealous, right? That they're not getting paid to promote, you know, d- a diet tea or whatever. <laughs> like, if if a company came to you and was like, "Take a picture with this bag of tea on your Instagram," you don't have to use it or anything. It'll give you five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yesterday I'd do it. Yes, like, that, that's not even a question. Get out of here. Yeah, they they found uh, literally the perfect <laughs> job. Yeah. Speaking of money, let's 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 leapfrog one for now. Okay. Um, Aunt Becky from Full Oof. House. She's a criminal. She's a criminal. criminal. An actual. And by the way, when I saw her picture, like her recent picture, she is still as good looking as she was in Full House. Or maybe better. Like maybe gotten hotter with age. I don't get like her and John Stamos, like they were married in the show. Uh, they must have like sacrificed some some infants or something to like grow like, up and still look as beautiful as they are. They, they just look so – they're so beautiful, and they look so young still. It's in, it's insanity. It's insane. The both of them. Rob Lowe, too. Lump Rob Lowe in with them. It's yeah. ridiculous. Because, uh, I mean, he, he was doing a QA and a today on Twitter. He looks – I don't know. He he just looks like – like not younger, but just like better. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't – he just looks healthier and like handsomer than anyone his age should. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So anyway, so, so Aunt Becky um, – <laughs> from full, what's her real name? Lori Laughlin. We know her real name. Lori Laughlin. She was so. Do you know any, any of the? I know the the top level stuff, but what is, what's the details? Yeah. So the nitty gritty is there was this guy uh, out of California who was running like this this program where you would pay him money, and then he would filter it into someone at whichever school you were trying to get into. So in Lori Laughlin's daughter's case. They wanted her to get into USC, the the stupid USC, University of Southern California, as a student athlete, except she was not an athlete. So what they did was they would pay this guy money and then he would pay off. Uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was the rowing coach or it, it was someone or the athletic director. And then the the her daughter didn't even fill out the application to get into USC. So that's what like – She's just as complicit. Like I know she's a kid, and like the parents are the ones who gave the money. Yeah. But unless you're mentally challenged, like how do you think you get into a college when you don't fill out the application? And she's been yeah. she. I mean, she's like this. She was this like Instagram YouTube star. Um. So I mean, she just really wanted to. She even said she's like, I just wanted to go there to party. Um. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I'm sure. So basically, that's what they did for a lot of, you know, they had CEOs and um, uh, actresses and stuff who who were all caught up in this. But it all ties back to this one guy who would just pay off a certain member of either a coach or athletic director or, you know, somebody. And then that person would get in as a student athlete because they obviously certain schools will have, you know, if you're proven to be a student athlete, it's easier to get in than if you're just a student. Um, personally, I, I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I don't see the big deal. I, 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 I don't, I mean, what's the difference between, you know, giving university of Southern California a hundred thousand dollars to build a, a new, uh, yeah, a new a building or something. Right. I mean, there's no difference. This is how it's always been done. I just, I think it's a whole bunch about nothing. I mean, yes, it's sad that other kids didn't get in. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I just really don't see the big deal with it. There's, I mean, it's it's really tough to, I mean, it's tough to feel bad for. Oh, her I don't feel bad and, for and them. the daughter too. It's it's also yeah no 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 yeah you no know, I, I agree with you and and it's also like you said like this is not a big deal this is how the world works this is how things like this happen you don't think that you don't think you think that they're the first ones that ever paid to get into college or crazy just like you said like people making donations that's that you go you go have a meeting with the president of the university. And you say, well, I'm going to make this $200,000 donation, and my son's also going to apply to this school and pay tuition. 
So, you know, what's going to happen here? Is he getting in or is he not getting in? Of course he's getting in. Exactly. I mean, there's people that get into college like you and I got into college. And then there's people that are are just in a different, they live a different, in a different world. They live in a different lifestyle. And you know what? It's only going to go back and hurt her. I mean, she's not getting a college education. If her parents want to waste millions of dollars, uh, I I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, again, it does stink if you're the, you're that one guy or girl who didn't get into USC that year because... Laurie Laughlin's daughter got in yeah. as a crew recruit, but yeah, I mean, I, don't I know. Oh, yeah. Also, like, there's so many colleges. There's so many colleges that would be willing to take your money. Like, you didn't get into USC. You were just on the cusp where you were gonna get in, and you weren't gonna get in. You got knocked off because of of this girl. You know, like, there's plenty of other options for you. I'm not saying that's the you know. It's, I'm not saying that's right or whatever. But you're not like. You're not also condemning this person that didn't get into USC from ever going to college. You know, it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, unless you were like, this kid's like really had his heart set on going to USC, then all it's, of a sudden it was ripped away. Imagine this kid is just like on the fringe of society now. It's a garbage man or something. Because <laughs> he didn't go to, he, he can't go but to Trojan's games. strange. Like of all the, it's not, I don't, uh, is USC but, known for like its academic, like prow, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> It's not like a Yale. It's absolutely not. Or, it's it's, it's yeah. known for its athletes. So I don't know. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to. I'm not, I'm not dissing USC at all or anybody that went to USC. I'm just saying it's like it's not Harvard. Like you're not, you're not going. I mean, I'm sure it has like specific programs that are very good, but you're not. It's not like a very, very prestigious Ivy League college. That's not the level it's at. <laughs> I agree. So. But and again, if it wasn't. Like if if Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman, the other actress, and this, this wouldn't even have been a news story. Yeah did did William H Macy I get involved at so all? So he has not yet, all? but I don't understand how. Like, there's no way his wife, right? How- you know, did this and he didn't know. No, no mention he's, of him at all. He's been like barely barely mentioned. No it's mention kind of strange. All. Like, there's no way he didn't know. Yeah. It is weird. Bill Macy, he's a crazy man. I don't know. S- <laughs> Speaking of getting named, uh, Bob Kraft's been in the news he since has. the last time we podcast. Um, he went he, he went down to Florida, Jupiter, Florida, home of uh, rest in peace, uh, Bert, uh, what about, Bert, uh, Bert Reynolds. Is that his last <laughs> name? Why can't I? Why am I? Yeah, I Smokey and the Bandit. Bert Reynolds. He just died, right? That's it's on, all right. Yeah. Woods. Home of Bert Reynolds. And home of the uh, orchids and Tiger Woods, and home of uh, orchids of Asia Day Spa, where for yep, forty nine dollars was, was it? Yeah, it was, is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> Very cheap. Less sub fifty dollars, you can get jerked off after your massage. And Bob Kraft was one of the other. It was just all elderly of, men on that. Of list. Old men. Very elderly men. <laughs> Honestly, don't. Yeah, I mean, I I These under. Poor guys. Stand it like in his way. I mean, what else is he gonna do? You know. But at the same time, that's the one you pick. Like at least you know you're a billionaire. You own the you own the New England right. Patriots. But he's seventy seven years old. I mean, like he's lived a full life. If he wants to go and get a, a hand job from this masseuse, and let him do it. I mean, that's to. I don't know. This is another thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too lax with our laws, but. I I I I don't see the big deal of this at all. I mean, I understand it's illegal. That's the only no, thing. I don't see. Any, can't, it, can't. Yeah, and full stop. Like you know, the sex trafficking yeah. issue. Like no. that's a whole different thing. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about this day spa who wanted to, like for a little extra money, you can get a little something extra at the end of your massage. That's. I mean that that's what we're talking about here. I there's I don't know. It was stupid. It was really stupid. I think that. I think that him, like Bob Kraft's name being on there, had a lot to do with how big it got, how big it got blown up. Obviously, like you know, let's throw, let's throw it up. And and one of the best parts of the story was that he was there the morning yes. of the AFC Championship game. That means that that means he flew from there to from Jupiter, Florida, on his private jet Probably to Kansas City. Tons of you know, reinvigorated, just ready to after. go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's stupid. It already blew over in the news. Yeah, like, I know he hasn't gotten he, he has he, he hasn't gotten no, any kind of suspension or anything, right? I don't like, understand. What, like what, they, what can, they, they shouldn't do? do it. He's he's an owner of a team, but I, this has nothing to do with football. Like, you know what I mean? He wasn't. It really doesn't. Like yeah, it might no. violate like the conduct 
league, but like you can't penalize the team. Like maybe I, don't, I mean, if you want to like suspend him from showing no. up, but like how can you suspend someone from showing up at a stadium they own? Like you can't enforce that. Um. Yeah. Right. You know you can't. So I, I don't know what could possibly be done. What, what has been done to him legally? Yeah. So like the, what soliciting he prostitution illegal. is so what. Not talking about he, the he's pled not guilty so far, but he's. I mean, I can't. He's not gonna go to jail. Like I. I don't. I don't know what exactly is going to happen because again, the bigger thing, like he was, it was part of a bust on sex trafficking. Like he's not a sex trafficker to the best of my knowledge, but I think he just happened to be the client of this uh, massage parlor. But the interesting thing that this has picked up steam. So the owner of the massage parlor, her name is Cindy Yang and she is actually being investigated because she has been offered offering Chinese business executive access to President Trump at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. And Trump Wait, what? She's been offered presidential well, she's like, presidential offering so she's going the to these Chinese businessmen who would come to this massage parlor and say I can get you access to the president. Yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah, oh, and Trump watched the uh, Trump. Trump's like been pictured with her, like he knows her, which means he's been to that massage parlor as well. What? And yeah, but like to oh, definitely, she's basically saying like I'm good enough friends with Trump that when he goes to Mar-a-Lago, his resort in Florida, like she's telling these business executives, I can get you access to him. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. That is wild. That's what I so want now, to why know. Isn't that why, the big story? I don't understand what this like, guy why, does why is, to not get these yeah. stories become huge. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, how is that not on the front page of every paper? He just has too many. Yeah. It's, it's too many. It's like, it's like that feeling like that I have right now. I see a book that I want, and so I, I'm like, I'm going to read that book. So I buy it, and I never read it. Then I see another book that I want to read. And I'm like, oh, I'll buy it, and then I'll read it after I'm done reading that other book. And now I just have a bookshelf full of fucking books that I'm never going to read. It just wears I'm just you like, down. This is all too much for me. This is just all of the shit that it just wears you down. It's like all this stuff. It's like, you, I bet if we actually thought about it, we could come up with so much heinous bullshit that Donald Trump has been doing. I mean, just last week, he called the owner of Apple, <laughs> the CEO of Apple, Tim Apple. His name's Tim Cook. His, they call did him you hear Tim his Apple. excuse for that? And that's like mild. It's like, See this. This is what pisses me oh, no, off the most because the the type of person that can't even admit that they're wrong about this <laughs> is a sociopath. Like he could easily just been like, "Yeah, I said Tim Apple by accident." He said yes. he said Tim Cook, but he said Cook really fast, and nobody heard it. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> There's he, no way. There's no way. It was so. Yeah, so what do you say, Tim? Like, Tim Cook <laughs> Apple. Tim Cook Apple. Like, why would you say no that either? There's that no doesn't way. make There's sense. No way. Uh, yeah. It's just a bold lie. It's just like he looked us in the eyes. He looked America in the eyes and it's said that. No. He was like, that's why? not true. Such why a, would you lie about that? Small thing. You messed it up. Oh, it why makes would, no sense. Why would you lie? It, it. But anyway, yeah, so like that's what it feels like. It's just that's why none of this stuff sticks. It's because he's such a ridiculous person and does all this illegal shit, you know. I mean, guess nothing really yeah. proved yet, but like, come on. Like, and then like, he's just a ridiculous, he's just a ridiculous person. What did I just send you? Um, oh, I sent you a gift of Donald Trump. It was just like, like pointing. Uh, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. His like, his oh gift, you saw Donald Trump gift. It's like, yeah, everything it's like he a does. Treasure, it's a treasure trove. Once we're like, you know, like 10 years removed from him being president, we'll be able I still, to like, laugh I, at you, this. Sometimes you can't help but laugh. I mean, like, it's just, truly laugh. It, it's, it's sad and scary sometimes, but he's just, <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand how fifty million people voted for him yeah. to be the president. But uh, that's the world we live in. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sure we might have uh, hopefully an update yes. on Bob Kraft at some point, and also an update on this massage parlor owner being close with Trump. Me yeah. too. Might have to do some I need research. To know more about that. Do a deep dive. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go down to Jupiter. We'll 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 go down there. We'll start interviewing. Tell us everything. Everybody. We know what you know. <laughs> See how no, you better... Tell us everything. <laughs> Donald, Donald, no, Trump, me. Donald Trump. No, there. it's you. I can, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. 
So before we get into, I know you have a, a, a big a topic you want to talk about. I wanted to mention quickly. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. Yeah. I didn't. I, this is the so, only thing I've seen. Uh, now this is just me making it. it up. Not not the what happened, but this potential WrestleMania match. So Stephanie Beatriz, who's Rosa Diaz, the wonderful Rosa Diaz on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, put up a video on Twitter over the weekend and she was stuck in a traffic jam in Los Angeles. And there was like this model doing a photo shoot, like on the side of the road, like not in the road, but it was causing a traffic jam, which I have to imagine is always a traffic jam in Los Angeles. Anyway, it turned out that model was Lana. Yep. So Lana like quote tweeted, quote tweeted her. And she's like, I'm, oh. you know, I'm the ravishing Russian. And uh, you know, I cause a traffic jam, whether I'm in a bikini or not, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm fantasy booking Rosa Diaz first Lana at WrestleMania. I mean, I-, I think it should be Rosa or yeah, Rosa and Nikolash versus Lana and Rusev. L- little mixed hack action. Hey, imagine. Oh, we'll be there. I mean, that, that would be, be pretty a- cool. That would be amazing. But- I mean, that Michael Chang, so Colin cool. Jost are already the awesome. special, you know, the special hosts, um, of special guest correspondents. Yeah, that's a, we are we are in for a treat this year at Mania. I got a feeling there's going to be a few. I do a too. Few it, it's supposed to be. It, they said it's going to be the longest pay per view ever. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so long. They said it's going to be it's seventeen matches. So long. <laughs> <laughs> we better. Do, hopefully, it's not oh too cold. My god. What are you going to oh do? Oh my god! Hey, at least we got our sweet jackets. Yep. Yeah. Well, we have jackets yeah. for that. That's right. They're so cool. I wore mine out on Friday. I can't wait to wear those jackets. Oh. Yeah. To the liquor store and to the really? Did you... No compliments. Got some Did looks. Did you get any compliments on it? But I feel like the... Yeah. So it's, it's people that don't know. It's a, Yeah, so it's, it's a, like a a multicolored. It? And when I say multicolored, it's all the brightest colors together. So it's yellow and lime green and pink. <laughs> and the front is just all yellow with a little WWE logo. And then the back is this humongous portrait of the Macho Man, Randy Savage. And it's so comfortable. That's and so it's nice. just, uh, I'm so, so excited good. to wear it to Mania and Raw. I mean, we're going to be, the, we're going to be hits. We're going to be huge in the crowd. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had the Nitro one with fire. The Nature Boy and Mike. Yep, his came in uh, the Nature Boy. Such a good one. Uh, Such a good. Such a good. It's such a good one. I'm excited. I'm very. All right. So what is this? uh, What is this? This uh, football Uh, league you you speak of? So, the FCFL. It's called the Fan Controlled Football League. This is something out of like I don't even know what. Like this is not gonna. I don't. I hate to be a pessimist, but uh, let me describe okay. it to you, and you tell me how you think this is going to go. So this is this is something that's happening. Like Chad Ochocinco owns a team. I realize I only put Chad in the notes. <laughs> you know, I'm on first name basis with him. Chad Ochocinco owns a team. R- Richard Sermon owns a team. Marshawn Lynch owns a team, and it's a football league. And the podcast I was telling you about earlier, kind of funny games. They're based in San Francisco. They're they're pretty big in the world of like you know some podcast like video game podcasts and a few other like comedy podcasts, but they got offered to co-own a team in this league. And what's special about this league, again, it's the fan controlled football league is that the fans of certain teams, they vote on the name, the logo, the coach and the plays. So you go to the football games and on an app, you vote what the team should do. Like, you say run the ball. You say pass the ball. You say run it, throw it to this person, whatever. This is the the whole gist of this thing. It's it's, so it's they actual call it Madden in real playing? life, like actual athletes. It, actual huh. actual people, yes, actual ac- athletes playing, and they're selling it as like you know, like it's Madden in real life. They're hour long games. Right now, they're only being played in Las Vegas. Um, it's going to be ten weeks. I think there's only like a handful of teams, but they're like, so they're testing it out and how it works is like, cause obviously like <laughs> if we went to a stadium and watched a team, you could just vote when the other team is on offense, the team you don't like, you could just vote for them to like punt. You know what I mean? Like, like just, you know, punt it away, keep punting it away. But like they block that somehow. And also like, if you're a fan of one team, if you call more p- plays for your team, then you get more 
like your weight, your vote carries more weight. So like they have like it's just like so strange. I I can't imagine this is gonna last. Where does it very start? Long. Like something like this. It starts this summer, I think. It, it's this. It's it this does, year yeah. sometime. I mean, it, it sounds starts. interesting this and is the first also of it. like a really horrible idea. Like, imagine being a coach. Like, first of all, imagine this. Like, you, okay, voting on plays is one thing. Voting the team name, that's fine. Imagine that you're you're trying to get a job as coach of one of these teams, and the fans decide, like, no, no, we're not going to vote for that guy. We'll vote for someone else. Like, imagine, how does that work? Like, you find three candidates, and then, oh, sorry, two of you guys aren't going to make it. Like, it's like yeah, a, it's that, like I would be show. very upset if I was one of the coaches that didn't get, like, voted in. Like, because you can't really – yeah. You can't predict it. You can't plan on it like any other normal coaching job. Imagine being, yeah, no. Imagine being the running backs on one of the teams, oh and like all the fans decide we're just going to run it every down, and the, the running so backs are like, "Please, please stop, please stop running the ball. I'm so <laughs> tired. We have no backups. Please stop." I, I, I just like I'm curious, but like. What could be interesting is if nobody goes to these games and like there's just a few group of friends, so it's just like a group of friends versus a group of friends like controlling these football teams. Like that would be that would be something. Like if you actually felt like you had like you had control of the team, like it would be cool if like randomly one person in the crowd gets control of that drive and you pick all the plays for that drive. And then the next drive, like it's someone else versus like, you know, you voting. Like it's like a, what, what show? Is, oh, um, like who, ask him, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? I was going to say, ask a millionaire. That's not the name. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Then you would like pull the crowd. That, that was one of the lifelines. Like, you know, like instead of that, it's like that one person gets a vote. Oh, it's Ryan Fogarty. It lights up on your phone. And See, you're that like, would be pretty awesome. Mary. I would, I would like that. I mean, I e- either way, I mean, it definitely has some potential. Like it's kind of cool, but. Yeah. I just don't know, like, you're just, you're relying on these strange, stranger fans to just, like, not ruin all, like, like you said, like, what if the running back's yeah. like, I can't, I can't run anymore, like, please stop. I can't, I, like, we can't run anymore. Or, like, what if the coach just decides to, like, go off script and be like, that's not what we're doing? Like, yeah. as a coach, you have to feel powerless, right? What are you, what are you doing? What is, what is the point of you being there? Just to relay the, the, the play from the fans to the thing? You must feel like an idiot. And, and also, I guess you don't really need to be a, a, a right. football coach at all because you're not doing anything. Like, what are you, you're not doing anything. You need, you need strength and conditioning. I guess you got to teach them the plays in practice, but game day, you're useless. You're not being used at all. And with, and with the XFL coming, the AAF already out and like doing, you know, not great. Like it's, it, it, I watch it. It's fun. But like at the end of the day, like the NFL is still going to be king. Like what is a league like this going to be? Like, you know, I understand Chad, you got Chad Ochocinco, Richard Sermon and Marshawn Lynch to own teams, but what can they really do? They have, they have their own shit to do. Like besides, I mean, I guess is Richard Sermon uh, still playing no, or did he play. retire? Yeah. Is Mar- Marshawn Lynch is still playing too, right? Yeah, so I mean they're they're playing. So like, if this the league starts up during the NFL, like, what can they possibly actually be doing as owners of teams? Like, they're not going to be able to show up and do like, you know, meet and greets and stuff. I guess Chad. Yeah, single, I, I don't. Marshawn, I'm pretty sure is is playing with the Raiders, but he's he's like a freak athlete anyway. Like he he could just like not do some not like play football yeah. for like a year or two and then come back in and just all be like a thousand yard rusher. But yeah, and yeah. So I don't know. It's, no, it's, it's only a, on it's Twitch. A cool idea. Okay. So yeah, they're going to be streaming it on Twitch that, to start off. So they yeah. don't have to get TV deals, which that's good. That's extra money. But they're still going to have to pay a ton of people. Like the AAF had trouble making payroll, or like after the first week, and like they're a pretty substantial. They had a pretty substantial like in, investment in the in the AAF. And they are, they were having trouble making payroll after the first week. Who knows what's going to happen here? Like football teams aren't exactly small things. Like if it was a basketball league, okay, you have nine guys. Yeah, it's. You know I, I mean, mean like, I don't know. Football is. is just hard. Like I, I I, even with the XFL, I mean, Vince is putting hundreds of millions of dollars in, but it's just. Who knows? That might not. Be I mean, a, is, if they get a good TV deal, it'll help. But I mean, 
that's just part of the battle. You need good ratings. I think if any of these yeah, leagues are going to make so. it, it's going to be the XFL. If any of them uh, are going to make it, it's going to be the XFL. Yeah, me too. I, I think that they they learned from their mistakes the first time around. I think that the first time around actually helped them right. because everybody already knows what the XFL is. They're, they already know what it is. They does, there's, no, there's no need for explaining. It has nothing to do with the NFL. It's its own thing, and it's owned by Vince. It's it's Vince McMahon. And that's a huge so that's, that's like, all you really that's a huge know. help. You're just already Sorry. starting um, in front of the eight ball instead of being behind the eight ball. Just made that saying up. Thank you. I'm going to put it on a pillow. I like it. I think you should go with it. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, Star exactly. pillows. That's the big sellers on Etsy. Nice pillows. Uh, so, <laughs> Ryan, what do you – I like it. So, what are you watching? Watch? What are you watching? Um, actually, just uh, – are you caught up on The Walking Dead? Okay, so I just – I am just not. Watched, I'm still a few behind. Yeah, so I, I won't I'm do not, any spoilers. You, just you, watched uh, last night's episode. And uh, I tell you what, I mean, the last season and a half, I've been very, very impressed um, with the way they've been able to rebound from, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think we both were both in agreement that they kind of faltered the Negan storyline and it kind of threw the show through a loop a little bit. Um, but they've really come back strong. The characters yeah. aren't, you know, season two and three with like Shane and Merle and, and, and those type of characters. It's, it's very, it's, it's never going to get back to that character driven show like it was. Um, but you still got Daryl, you still got Michonne. Yeah. Uh, Carol to a lesser extent. Um, the actress they got to play like eight year old or however, eight to 10 year old Judith is unbelievable. She's just knocking it out of the park. Yeah. She's so good. And really? they introduced new villains called the Whispers, uh, who are frightening and actual legitimate, like very good villains. And they're doing a good job with it so far. Uh, and then this past episode, they actually um, introduced a, a smaller group of villains, which is awesome because I feel like the biggest okay. thing with that whole Negan storyline is it was Rick versus Negan for two seasons and there was no one else, but there was really no action. I mean, there was a little action here and there, but uh, they're, they're introducing these smaller groups of villains now. And then you have the whispers who are really the big bads. Um, they're, they're the, the worst of the worst. Um, but really, really enjoying the walking dead. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not. I don't think it's must see TV every week like it used to be. Like on Sunday nights, out, you know, Holly and I would have to watch it because you don't want spoilers. It's not there yet, which maybe it won't get back there. And it's really hard to yeah. to get back to that spot when you're in the seventh and eighth season. Um, but been watching that pretty consistently. Uh, we've been rewatching Game of Thrones. We're almost through season four, so we're hoping to get to get caught up. I nice. don't know if we're gonna make it. Um, by April 14th. But I think we can do it. This weekend is going to be a big weekend for us. And when I say big weekend, I mean watching... <laughs> we're going to watch a lot of Game of Thrones. The hours. Um, as far as new stuff, what I... Yeah. The, the most recent thing I watched was Triple Frontier uh, on Netflix. Uh, fantastic. I'm really, really good. That. Long. It was like two and a half hours, which is kind of long for... It's basically like an action heist movie. But they really took their time with yeah. these the characters, um, which I really appreciated. And the heist is like a very small part of the movie, like the, the heist itself, um, which is kind of cool. But Ben Affleck, okay. uh, Pedro Pascal, Charlie Hunnam, um, Oscar Isaac, Garrett Hudland. And it's just really, really I, – I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It's on Netflix streaming now. Um, so yeah, that's oh, and they were all really, really so good. They're cast. all friends, like they're all uh, former Marines or former Army guys, and um, kind of come together with this common goal. Things go astray. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it because it just came out over the weekend, but it's really good. Definitely worth your worth your time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Other than that, not not really too much else. I mean, nice. Brooklyn Nine Nine is is taking up a large quantity of my life. And I say that as happy as possible because it's, it's just amazing. So uh, we watch just a lot of TV. Haven't seen too many new movies after yeah. Oscar season. Um, do want to get back into the swing of things, but I know now we're kind of going into um, this is like superhero season. I'm not a big superhero 
movie guy, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's just not my time right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about how about you? Yeah. Um. Um. So I've been watching a lot. The last couple weekends, I've been really like tearing through my backlog of movies that I've been wanting to see. I just haven't. So I I saw Hereditary, which is one of the most terrifying movies that I've ever seen. And just like creepy too. It's it it's not like jump scary, it's just like very psychological and like very like in your head type movie. Um very good, very, very well done. Probably the unsung unsung hero of uh of oh, wow. horror movies from last year, I would say. Um yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I watched Leaving Never Neverland, which is the documentary about Michael Jackson being a complete fucking monster of a human being yeah i did watch which that is too. just so depressing it's just like tough to watch i actually, I actually didn't finish it I, I i couldn't get through the second hour of the second uh the second documentary it's two two hour documentaries it's really tough to uh, to get through they just like these kids I, and like people are i can't believe people are kind of come out and say that these kids are like these guys are like lying about what happened I don't want to get too deep into it, but it's it's fucking terrible. It's like awful. It's terrible. It um, it's gonna be. I've always said like you got to separate the the music from the musician. Like in scenarios with like R. Kelly, like I can still listen to his music even though he's a fucking shitty person, like a fucking awful person. But with Michael Jackson, and after seeing this, I'm like, God, it's so tough. It, that's so tough. Like I now I can't listen to a Michael Jackson song without thinking about all this awful thing he like like preyed on fucking little kids. It's terrible. It's terrible, inexcusable. It's fucking awful. Um <laughs> so that was great. It left me in a great place. Um as you, as you can tell. Um I saw Captain Marvel in theaters and I know you're not a big superhero guy, but it was it was pretty good. Uh there's so many for me there's so many good Marvel movies that it, it probably stacks up somewhere in the middle, like probably not near the top. But it was still good, and Brie Larson was fucking awesome. She was so good. I can't stress that enough. She was she like she's a welcome addition to the to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Very happy to have her. Um, the, the one thing they could have done better was Sam Jackson is not a young man, and in the movie he they de age him to make him young because it's, it's supposed to happen in the in the early nineties, and they de age him. But obviously, when he's in scenes where he's running, he's not de-aged. Like, they can't de-age his legs. So he, like, so he looks very old when he's running. So any of the scenes where he's moving, it's bad. But when he's stationary, it's pretty good. And when they can use his stunt double, it's also good. Much better for him. But they need to, yeah, like, I feel avoid like they, they Sam Jackson. There's got to be an easy way to get around that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, you, you just got you got to shoot more clever <laughs> angles. You can't have Sam Jackson moving. It's bad. It, it's it like when it, when it comes out on digital or when I have it on DVD, you'll have to come over and watch it because it's hilarious. It's so bad. Like, yes. he, like did you did you see Blade Runner twenty forty nine? <laughs> okay, so Harrison Ford running in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. That's what it looks yeah, like. He, like in Harrison he shouldn't Ford be running, running anywhere. Well, like, like, so that's the first like. thing that comes to mind when that people say that is Christopher Walken as <laughs> no. uh, Captain Hook. <laughs> He shouldn't have been moving around, you know. He shouldn't have been there in oh, general, yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. just you know, he he's paid his no, dues. So the, the, he doesn't have to run around. Let him let him be stationary and just chat, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he has a little more motion than he really needs to be. But yeah, oh, I love Ben Mendelsohn. Great. Ben Mendelsohn was in it. He was awesome too. Um, he's like I feel like he's in everything too. He's just in everything. So good. Um. I also saw, I've also watched the first two episodes of American Gods. I was so excited for this show to come back. I was waiting for it for a long time, but so far it really hasn't delivered on like the, on like what captured me in the first season. It just, I don't know. It's just like, it's not there for me yet. It like in the first season was so exciting because you're learning about all these new characters and you're trying to figure, you're getting into like every episode you were being introduced to a new God, one of the old gods, one of the new gods, whatever. Uh, but this now it feels like you, you they all assembled and now it's like, ah, I'm waiting for the payoff. Like it's not there yet. So it's a little slow. Um, so not not quite what I was expecting, but something that was completely unexpected that I watched last weekend was behind the curve. It's a documentary on Netflix about the Flat Earth Society. 
Ryan, if you have not I seen haven't this, in a, you need I, to watch I, I this. have not. I need to watch it. I, I, maybe tonight after Raw, if I can stay awake, or at least oh. sometime this week. It It is fascinating. They follow a few key players in the Flat Earth Society like movement. It is just like one of the guys, the guy they follow the most, his name's Mark Sargent. And I mean, you'll see it. I don't want to like ruin anything, any like, like funny parts of it, but he is just like, he's worshipped amongst the Flat Earth Society. Like they come and it's like they have like they interview scientists and they're talking about how like the reason for a lot of the reason for like the big Flat Earth uprising is not because of people that actually think the Earth is flat because that's fucking insane. Um, it's, it's more people that like throughout their life got kept getting pushed to the fringe of society, kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And so now they just believe it so they can be opposite of what the rest of society is. And like, you can see it, like the people who like give speeches on it and like, they just like thrive off this, like, like, every, like a belonging. It's like, so sh- it's more than just them thinking the earth is flat. Definitely. Like you have to, you have to like see it and then see if you agree with me. but. It is something fucking crazy that these people are doing. So watch it. It's called Behind the Curve. Great documentary on Netflix. Um, it was a surprise for me last week. Very excited to watch. It was very excited. Neil actually which, suggested yeah, when it. When he comes, when he comes yeah. in with a suggestion, you got to take that seriously because he's he's not yeah. you know he's not necessarily Mister Positive. Right. No, and he was just like, you have to watch it. it is but it's also like he was watching it for the. What's the word? It's like for he was watching it for the misery of it. Like he like all these people are fucking insane and he was just laughing at them. Which is like that's what you do for some of it. I watched it with GMAC and we were just having a blast watching it because these people are just like it's just like what they think is it's crazy. And then there's this one guy who just like makes a ton of money selling like flat earth models, like a flat version of the earth, and they sell it to the other people in the society. And they See, have a that, conference. That's, that's frustrating. It's ridiculous. Because it's so stupid. Like f- I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll have to watch it. And like parents bring their parents Good. bring their kids to these meetings and them. stuff. What are you doing? They were they were they were they were celebrating this story that one of the the parent the teachers I think it was like a teacher called one of the parents into school and said that when she was explaining that the Earth was round, like it was a sphere. Like one of the kids like stood up and said no, said no it isn't and they were like all cheering it I'm like what what well you can't you can't you can't encourage it's not, that. It's, not, like, it's, it, not it's just not it's flat it's just not like not flat they yeah <laughs> it's science it, it, yeah it's science like science is not looking for science isn't it's an arrow and I think they say that in the documentary it's just pointing people in the direction of what's the truth it's not saying this is true. And then figuring it out right. backwards, how do we make that true? It's 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 you start at science and you get the answer from there. It's not the opposite. They were they were saying that the reason why nobody knows like what's on the outs, like how nobody's fallen off the earth, is because around the outside of the earth is a giant ice wall. And I know you're gonna you're, you, that mm-hmm. sounds um, familiar, right? Because you're watching Game of Thrones. One of the people actually says. <laughs> Just like in the show Game of Thrones, that's Good. what they're comparing the outer ice wall so that's to the wall at. in Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, so that's where we're at right now. Yep. Behind the curve, genius name. Um, instead of being ahead, ahead of the curve, or in your case, oh. Ryan, being ahead of the eight ball. Just genius, so, it's all going to be fuel for my pillow. My pillow company. Comes back. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's what I've been watching. And a few well, other as soon as I watch Behind the Curve, I'll, I'll we'll let you know my stuff. thoughts. Um, yeah. And I think you could probably, I know you watched American Gods with me last year. I think you can probably wait. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, you can just. I saw, off. like, I don't read it's the actual not, reviews, really, but I just kind of see, boring. like, read some of the headlines on it. And I follow a couple TV critics that I trust. Like, they're not just negative to be negative. And they, they were like, eh. It just, you know, it doesn't have the same spark as it did in season one so far. So, but I'm going to, I'll give it a try. I can binge no, it yeah, at definitely some point. Not. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
No, so I mean, I think, I think, that's uh, I think that, else that touches on everything. You know, got our what we're watching, got hit our news events, what we're up to. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's a that's a boom, baby. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, this has been the Average Nobody's podcast. You can check us out on iTunes, on Google Play, on Stitcher Radio. Uh, you can also check us out on our website, AverageNobodies.com, and on our YouTube, YouTube.com slash The Average Nobodies. Um, we'll probably be back next week as well with a podcast, but just you know, keep your ear to the ground, and we'll we'll show yep. up. Yeah, follow us on Twitter at Average Nobodies, and, and then that YouTube, uh, our YouTube page is where all the new videos are going to be popping up, and we have a very extensive library. So if you need something funny and entertaining to watch, we are here for you. Yes, you really can. I you might can go down the do that later. That might be my Monday night. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool cool matt have an excellent all night all right ryan it's been fun thank you all right see everybody you as well and we'll talk to everybody we'll talk soon. to you we'll talk to you <laughs> you'll hear us you'll hear us soon see see you all oh, soon we're so gonna late. come out individually to your house and talk to you all right see you later <laughs> later